Hi everybody, it's Paul. I'm here with Jamie and Jack to do a fireside chat here in December, 2022. We did one last year. Yep. But before we start, I gotta tell you, it's cold out and this is warm. There's enough infrared heat coming out of that thing. It's a good and little fireplace. It's gonna light fireplace. me up on fire. It's a nice little fireplace. It's gonna light your favorite chair up. This is your favorite chair. That right? is my favorite chair. Ah, I see. Love that chair. Anyway, it's nice to do this again. It is. So I think, like you said, last year we had our first fireside chat, and I think we would like to keep this going, yeah? On and on. Yep. No so reason not to. We, it's a, I think it's an opportunity to kind of look back on the year, see what we did as a business, what are the milestones. Maybe it's the type of thing that, as it lives on the interwebs, everybody can go back and kind of, it'd be interesting to reflect on the history. You know, when I was a kid, there's a bookcase on the other side of this room that has book of the year from 1959 to some other year. And when I was a little kid, it was kind of fun to go into those books and see what was happening in the world, around the world in those years. So this is a, our little world. In it's this been a challenging year, but good year. Yeah, what I like about this is a chance to talk to everybody, just reflect on the year, talk to our employees, talk to our teams, talk to our suppliers, talk to our customers, our retailers, everybody in the MI, and just kind of say, hey, this is what's going on. And to Paul's point, this year has been a doozy. We got, I mean, there's there's a war, there's inflation, there's talk of recession, there's currency fluctuation, there's overstock situations, there's understock Except situations. we made some really good guitars this year. That's what I was going to say. And at the end of there's it, some awesome guitars. Right. 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 Okay. A lot of challenges, a lot of people handling it differently. Our crew at work, Jamie, has really dug in to make good guitars this year. I like that part. Every year we have new challenges and every year we figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. For me, the primary focus is instruments first because if you take the guitar out of the case, no matter how much you like the guitar maker or not like the guitar maker, if you like the guitar, you like the guitar. The guitar talks. And so our, our purpose I keep is a, how good a guitar is it? You know, does it, did somebody get their money's worth? And it, it just be, it's kind of a constant focus every day. Um, and so there are four fundamentals I just want to touch again. If an artist has a boat of guitars, you know, they have these things they call boats, they, you know, 12 guitars, something. If the first guitar they go for isn't our guitar, that's our fault. That's the way we look at it. We look at it like that's our fault and if we had done a better job that they would have gone for our guitar because when the lights go down, the, the musicians want the best tool they can possibly have to do it. And so we look at it from a point of responsibility. That's the first fundamental. The second is that we don't want to make guitar-shaped objects. Now, the definition of that is something that looks like a guitar, but doesn't play very well or doesn't sound very good. It might look fine, but we want it to do its job. We want it to be a musical instrument you have if you have to take a really long line it's guitar 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 and then at some point it becomes a musical instrument and we want things to be above the line and that's important the third fundamentals we don't like boomerang so the definition of a boomerang is a guitar that the store sells and it boomerangs back <laughs> the customer says i don't want it for me I, I i don't want anything to do with a boomerang i want the guitar to stick i want somebody to to really be proud of it you know and the last piece is that I think we hold ourselves not just against what we've done in the past, but mostly about what the history of the guitar business did in the 50s and 60s and those magic instruments that were made. We're always comparing ourselves to history um, to make sure that we're not just with it, but if we can do better than that, we're, we're doing everything we can. So that still seems to be our focus. Um, regardless of you know the re Ukraine war or whatever else mm -hmm. is going on. And it seems to be working. I mean, our demand is still pretty strong. Um, you know, there's, there are a lot of challenges out there. Um, you know, the biggest thing I think that we face as a business is Paul has a lot of thoughts, Jack has a lot of thoughts, I have a lot of thoughts, but we also, we spend a lot of time trying to make sure that we have a culture around all that. And that's, that is, that's an ongoing, Effort. We're not a small company anymore. We, you know, we have you know several hundred employees and four hundred and fifty. Four hundred fifty, right? And so you know, part of you know the challenge of, of growing is making sure that we have processes and culture that backs up the thoughts of the folks in this room, right? Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I think we last last year we probably talked about the you know the weekly meetings where we tear guitars apart 
and we look at them eyes of the customer, we pull them out of fin goods and just see exactly what the customer is going to see. Um, this year, we added the the uh, the component improvement meetings, yeah. you know, and I think that has really not only served to really drive us into details on components, but also it's been a great teaching format too. You know, it's it's we're all sitting around nine o'clock every morning, just about every morning. Paul's there, Jack's there, I'm there. We've got our engineering teams. We've got other members of the business there, and we are beating the living daylights out of just about every component on the guitar. And um, which is fun. It is fun. You it kind is. of pick a spot and you go for it. Yeah, we've been we've been really driving down through that, and that's 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 one of the biggest things this year. That you know, when I look back, when we look at our, our book for the year, yeah, you know, I'll say this is the year we really got in the components, and Paul, you know, drove us deep into the what's and the whys in the house. And, um, you know, it's going to be really good for us going forward. Yep. I, um, you know, on some specifics, there's one, Paul and John Wasserman were going at it in Paul's office, and he put up on the big screen the where the string exits the nut on a bone nut. Right. right. So I think, I would say, ask most people in the audience, they're going to say a nut slot is a slot. No. No. In our no. world, a nut slot is has an exit point with a geometry yeah. and a radius yeah. and a slope. And we had the thing on the screen about this big, the yeah. way the string exits a nut. Makes a difference whether the guitar stays in tune, yep. whether it plays in tune, how the guitar sounds when it starts to vibrate, all that stuff makes a big difference. Yeah, I mean, it seems a little... Esoteric. Esoteric sometimes, but it matters. All these little things matter. You all can right. hear it. Uh, yeah. To be it, fair, I mean, they went upstairs and did it and brought the guitar it. back and it's instantly sounded it's better. Bad. Come on. You can hear it. How many times has that happened this year? You know, a lot, actually. Yeah. More than Change twice. the detail and poof, better sound. It's a, it's, a, it's a wonderful thing we've been working on here. So to let everybody know, John Wasserman is an engineer, mm -hmm. um, and he's a SolidWorks expert. Mm -hmm. And SolidWorks is a way for us to draw things virtually and then make them. And we've got to the point where we can make the part we drew really quickly. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, and, and John's been fundamental to that. So going back to the employee count, though, because yeah. we look at 450 people and we go, man, that's that's a lot. It is a lot. But in the overall scheme of things, the, I don't think it's a lot. And I think more importantly to that, it doesn't feel like a lot. So when, when you're on the shop floor, it feels like the old shop. You know, there's more people in the old shop, but it's got the feeling of a guitar building environment, which I think mm -hmm. is why I think it it goes fairly well for us because there's mm -hmm. like everybody's on the mission so yeah and another like paul's been doing the um he's been doing teaching classes too with folks on the floor and boy we're finding out so many people have so much interest in the details in the history and what's going on and we're trying to really bring that out and it's been a lot of fun it's been a highlight of the year i don't know look of all weird things this year i felt more like i've been able to inject more and more of the old West Street shop into the business than I have in years. I mean, how many times I'm out of the chair drawing it on the whiteboard, which is the same as drawing on a pad of paper mm -hmm. for, well, you know, if John Mann was making bridges, I said, yeah. John, I want it like this. It's the same kind mm -hmm. of thing, you know? So I think it's it's been a good year for that. Yeah, it's kept us focused. Yeah. It's been good. In addition to component advancements and the guitars that we're making in Maryland and all the stuff that we do every day, we've had some big releases this year too, mm -hmm. new stuff. Um, and I think one of the big ones for this year was definitely the SE Silver Sky. So that that came around in January. You know, I started smiling around that one. Why? 13,000 orders in one day. It was a hit. It was good. People wanted that one, I think. So that was a, that was, it's so wild because that guitar to me, it feels like it happened years ago now. It's such a part of our lives. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It doesn't seem like it just happened, you know, 11 months ago to me. But um, I'm happy with that because I feel like it definitely opened up the door. A lot of people have the opportunity to get a taste for what PRS is and yeah. what John Mayer's view on a PRS is. With he the likes Silver that Star. guitar. Yeah, he likes it. He's so. proud of it. Yeah. So that was a that was one fun one definitely for the year. and the development on that with as far as pickups go that took know, two years that was a while mm -hmm. it took a minute to figure out it, it was how do you make a pickup at that speed that you want it to sound really good every time that was the challenge right consistency yeah and i remember when we sent those pickups to johnny said you're done yeah it, there wasn't even a second prototype around it was 
many, many prototypes to get there, but his approval, yeah. that was it. It was yeah. done. Once we were happy, he was yeah. happy. Yeah. And that was yeah. cool. Yeah. That was cool. Yep. Another thing this year was pedals. That was a big one. So That's we not a market you should go into. Mm, yeah. <laughs> it's a very crowded no, we market. Debated, we debated yeah. that one. I always called it the uh, the hot sauce rack because you go into every store and there are colors and designs and cartoons yeah. and everything else. So we said, how are we going to do this? So well, we gonna... the, yeah. the problem with pedals is that they're flavor of the week, flavor of the month, and most of the pedals people buy don't get make the pedal board. And if they do make the pedal board, it doesn't last long. So the insistence amongst all of us was that if we're going to make pedals, let's make metals, pedals that make the pedal board and stay on the pedal board. Right. So we said we just, you know, take somebody else's product and stick a label on it no. and just Who said yeah, that? And just go. Didn't we say that we No, were... no. <laughs> like everything else, we we did it the hard way. It was sarcastic in a fireside chat. <laughs> that was nice. That was good. All right. So Keep we we did toes. it the hard way like we always do. And we have I think I think we landed in a really really good place. They're awesome. Yep. And it's it's also cool because we 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 design guitars a lot. We reinvent guitars to a degree yeah. a yeah. lot, but that was almost like firing up a new business. That's just a whole new world of fun. So we're made in the USA. We have through hole soldering. Well, um, the reason the through holes there is you need good sounding components. parts. Yep. For and and more the only good the parts we like the sound of it were were through hole. Through holes a a bigger part. It's not a it's not a um, little teeny part that's soldered without a wire. But that opened up the door to select some. Pretty exotic. I'm going to say exotic parts. Some yeah. some tough to tough to find parts. Esoteric. Yeah, that. Esoteric again. <laughs> again. Some more. But it made yep. it sound good. It made it sound good once again. Once again, we landed in a very good spot. So we released a Robin Ford guitar this year. Yes, indeed. And he came to the shop a lot to you know work on the pickups, work on the guitar, work on the design. Boy, what a sound that man has in his hands when he plays. Wow, what a guitar player. And to hear him go through what he wanted from the guitar through these amps in, in our uh, PTC shop was fascinating. And we worked on it and worked on it and worked on it and worked on it. And, you know, with, you know, Carlos or John or Mark Tremonti or Robin Ford or any of these people, they want what they want. And our job is to give them mm. what they want. And they wanted to know our, he wanted to know our opinion about each of the sections. Like when we made the headstock bigger, he said, do you like it? You know, I said, mm -hmm. yeah, I think it looks handsome. But he was used to playing a guitar his whole life where the headstock was bigger, right? Mm -hmm. So it seemed all to work out. I mean, it's just a good guitar. So they're, they're gonna, they'll stand the test of time. And then the thing is still in the aftermath of the Joe Walsh guitars, which I adored. There were other stuff that we came out with, Jack, and you were right in the middle of. So one thing that we've done, you. I guess you can say we've done it because we've talked about it, but we haven't launched it yet, and that's the SEDGT, which was fun because we kind of decided to give the audience a chance to go backstage and experience how we make a guitar, how we develop a guitar. That from video scratch. came out, right? Yeah, it's out. So the guitar won't be out until January, but. Um, if you're like us, and I think we like how things are made, yeah. this is a how things are made video. This is basically here are the steps you go through. And it was a ton of fun to put together too. So. David loved it. Yeah, David's been just absolutely wonderful to work with. So it's been a super fun project. He's another one of those guitar players that had an amazing sound in his hands. Unbelievable. Highly intelligent guitar player. Yeah, Big he, talks, guitar player. he talks sound the way that we talk sound. Yeah. You can have the same conversations with him that we have with ourselves, and it's really nice to develop something with him. So, I, I, I think of the the SCDGT is already out because that video got released. You know, I know. Well, it, the cat's out yeah. of the bag. The cat is out of the bag, but the guitar is not out of the case. So we'll get to that. Soon. <laughs> Very <That's> good. good. <laughs> so, we've also been doing a lot of pickup work, as you know, Jamie. Mm -hmm. And you know, electric guitar is a it has two of these microphones on it and it it's important to everybody that either plays the guitar or buys a guitar or wants a guitar how the pickups sound right and we've made some real progress and we're in right in the middle of making some real fine tweaks to them and we've got some more stuff coming 
I just think it's been a good pickup year. We've laid foundation that we will release over the year. All right, so we're, we're pretty happy with the products we're making right now. And um, you know, at the, at the base of that is, is the people. We, um, we spend a lot of time working with our folks and we're, we're, we're very fortunate here that we have a core group of folks that have been together for a long time. I was sitting in a meeting the other day with, uh, it was it Rob and Jeff and Megan, you know, talking about mm -hmm. things. And I've been here 14 years right now. Once again, I was a new guy in the room. You know, it's, yeah. it's you know, we have these meetings and I, I kind of feel like we don't even have to talk sometimes. Yeah. That I could probably just sit there and say, you know what I'm thinking? And, that happens. And we that can write down what we need to do next. That doesn't happen in my meetings with you. With me. well, uh, because oh, it's uh, kind of fun to, yeah. Okay, sure. yeah. That's a thing that happens though. You do, you, you start reading each other's yeah, minds. Yeah, yeah, it's a great feeling. You know, that we've got, we've got people that are they're committed and it doesn't get boring. It keeps fresh. And, oh, it's uh, not boring. No, it's not boring. No. No, and every year is new challenges like this we said before. This year not boring. Yep, but we've got a good group conquering it right now and uh, we're really proud and happy of, with what we got. We're in, a, we're in a lucky situation with the gang we got. Yeah, and I think you're talking about the consistency that we did a blog, I think, recently of people that have been there for 30 years, you yep. know, like the 30 and over club. And I did a, did a I was a part of that thing. And uh, it's interesting for me anyway, it doesn't seem like 30 years. I think I was talking about this last year. This is kind of weird when you look mm -hmm. at how many years there are and you, right. you just sort of like look at, you know, the people that work at PRS that weren't born when we started this thing. And that's just mm -hmm. very strange for me to come to realize. But um, We've been doing it for a while. A lot of people have been there for those 30 some mm -hmm. years. And that continuity of thinking that you're talking about, mm -hmm. that really does become almost to look across the table and read somebody's mind. You know what you're thinking. We do that a lot of times. We kind of like, mm -hmm. yeah, kind of know where you're going with that without having to use a whole lot of words. And I think that is, that's a kind of a cool thing to have a group that tight and that cohesive. Yeah, we don't have to spend a lot of time talking about expectations because it's everybody knows what the other person does. Kind of know what the yeah. deal is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, we've gotten a lot of awards for some of our female managers. Mm -hmm. And somebody was talking about the diversity and how important the diversity was. I said, that's not why we did it. I said, what are you talking about? I said, we gave those people those jobs because they were the best person for the job, not because it was female or male. Yeah. And there's a pride that I carry about the directors. You're right. They've been there, all of them, a long time. Mm -hmm. And they're not moving. And it's it's really cool. That part is, that consistency has been great. Yeah. That is really good. I know exactly what Bev, what she's capable of, or what she can do. I don't have to worry about if she says, I got it. You know she's got it, right? Mm -hmm. Judy says, I got it. She's got it, right? Mm -hmm. And as a group, the cool thing to me is is that more and more every year, that is the group driving the business. Yeah. They're, mm -hmm. That is the group mm -hmm. that, you know, as it should be. And I think, um, you know, as we go through every year of this, I think we're going to reflect mm -hmm. back and see that the team has become more powerful. The mm -hmm. team has become more knowledgeable. Um, and it just really, going back to the very beginning of this, it ends up meaning we're developing better instruments, you know, we're just mm -hmm. able to run faster and develop quicker mm -hmm. and, you know, think a little more freely. I think it's going to, I think it bodes well for us. Yeah, another thing we talked about the other day was we didn't have a single day of missed production because of components shortages this year. And I mean, which they, is weren't, crazy. they weren't sitting on a ship that we couldn't get the container. Yeah, in it. you listen to the radio and supply chain. You hear supply chain most. You know, supply. All the trains are off the tracks. Ten years ago, I don't think anybody knew what supply chain was, but yeah. you know that's that's a thing now. And uh, and we didn't miss a day. But part of that is once again continuity of team relationships. Yeah. And doing business, I think if you say doing business the old-fashioned way, that's already been used. But we, right. you know, I mean, we we have, I think, very good relationships in the, throughout the supply chain. Mm -hmm. and a lot of really good vendors who are, are, you know, friends. You know, they're friends of the business, and, Absolutely. you know, that really helps. And On the technical side, it's kind of like a little bit of a sidetrack. But the other thing I think that helps us is we don't really use generic stuff. So when the world runs out of generic part B, yep. that's not the part we're using. No, we've we've got, got our no, stuff. We, uh, so we can, you know, 
It, that comes with its own challenges, obviously, but it's kind of nice that we're not subject to the overall market ebb and flow. Yeah, the proprietary parts were huge over that's the last help. two to three years. Yeah, it's it a really big deal. did help. You, we you weren't know, waiting in line behind other people for anything. That's right. Yeah. But at the beginning of the year, we spent a lot of time saying, look, we're making 100 guitars a day. You're going to get your guitar, right? And, and so I think people have been patient with us. Mm. We don't want to go too fast uh, because we want to protect the quality. Don't want guitar-shaped objects. No, no guitar-shaped yeah. objects. Yeah, and, we, uh, and, although we didn't have a supply chain issue, we certainly did not hit our production goals this well, year. And various 100 reasons. 100 guitars a day is, a, I mean, we oh, did yeah. $100 million worth of business this year, yeah. Jamie, come on. Yeah. Yeah. You, you spent a lot of time in Japan this yep. year. Japan is uh, Japan is a focal area. I think we probably talked a little bit about it last year, uh, but this year, you know, finally COVID let up, um, you know, and that was a, that was a huge relief. So we were able to get over there. Paul and I went over. Uh, Dan and I went over, and we've spent a lot of time working with the team. We have a great team over there right now. So between Nobu and Jiro and Wataro and Hajime and the techs we've hired, um, you know, we feel really good about that, and we're excited to. Um, you know, build Japan to what it really could be. The Japanese folks, they have a great appreciation for quality, great appreciation for art and beauty and, and Our stuff know. as well, just in general. Yeah, uh, yeah our brand. You know, our brand so has many been, good things you know, that are in great store over there. So, you know, I, I feel like we really have the pieces in place to, to really have fun with that market over the next couple of years, which is exciting, super exciting. Um, investing a little bit in Canada right now too. We spent a lot of time trying to improve our supply chain and logistics. It's, believe it or not, Canada is a tough supply chain area. It just it takes a long time to get it up through the border and out to out to where it needs to go. So we we spent a lot of time on that. And uh, I think we talked probably last time we've invested in Latin America. New team, yes. uh, David Bell's heading up the Latin America group. So we're just you know we're really focusing on opening up new markets, expanding new markets as the world does its turbulent thing around us. Yeah. It's been a, a very interesting time. Um, now it's different, but there was a time when we were meeting with all of our employees constantly, and then that backed off for a variety of reasons, and it's back now. And we have these meetings where we tell the employees things that you normally wouldn't tell employees, but they they have a deal amongst themselves, a self-policing one that. If we tell you, you guys keep it to yourselves, and so you know what your cog in the wheel is doing, you know, right. what the whole thing's doing. And I, and we started that again, and it, so far it's going really well, and I think very appreciated. Meeting with 450 people, well, it's a lot of people. Some logistics there. Logistics sure. there, but we are sharing a lot of things that are not normally shared with employees, and, I, and I'm proud of that. We call them all factory meetings. Yeah. Yeah. And I think we found during COVID when we did not have the communication on a regular basis, how, how important that is. That connection is just, it's, it's, it's hugely important. I, I think it was a strain to not talk, but I'm glad we're back there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Agreed. So, in conclusion, what did you think about the year? What, what did you think about the whole thing? Yeah, you know, it, it, I remember last year we said it was a hard but rewarding year. Yeah. <laughs> this was hard. <laughs> hard but rewarding. Yeah. It's a theme. It's the same thing. Yeah, yeah. This, uh, they, there's just there's so much going on. But you know, it, I, I think what I just want to you know express is that you know we're pretty lucky you know as a group to have what we have here, and um, and we're very appreciative. You know, all the people we listed at the beginning of this, the uh, you know employees, the teams, the suppliers, the customers, the same you know the the MI, the network, our entire network. Yeah. Um, and we just have a lot of really good people around us, and um, you know we're in a fortunate situation. And um, you know it's time to uh, look back and say, hey, we're world's crazy, but with what we got, we're doing all right. Yeah, you know. And I think I look back, and I still do this. I can't believe this is our job. It's a good job. This is a good gig to have. I enjoy what I do every day. I am very appreciative that I get to work hard to try to provide good instruments to people you know there's really not anything else i can think of that i'd rather be doing so i'm i'm pretty appreciative of that yeah we are lucky we live in a an area where a lot of good people work with us yeah. and we live in an industry that there are pretty good-hearted industry yeah you know? mm -hmm. 
Look, I was scared about this year. I got on an airplane and went to Japan, came back, went to England, went to France, went to Italy, went to Germany, went back to the Netherlands, went back to England. And why would I do that? I wanted to know what the impact of the, of the war was going to have on our industry. I wanted to know what, the, what all these highly experienced dealers thought about what was going on. I wanted to know how we stood um, with guitars and boomerangs and, you know, making sure that they were cool with the product. And I learned so much at those dinners. Oh my God. But our industry's changing. I didn't understand the kind of impact that was going on. But when you go firsthand, mm. uh, it's a different thing. I walked into a store in Germany and they took me up for an interview and they walked me downstairs. I thought I was going to talk to 20 people. There are 250 people in the room. And I said, what? is going on they said welcome to germany and they wanted to know everything they drilled me for information mm. i loved it i thought the whole thing was great so i think we are lucky mm -hmm. we get to make guitars for a living look work on an island making guitars yeah work on an island making <laughs> guitars look we're making amplifiers we're making accessories now we're making pedals we've got yeah. the whole se line thing happening and people are taking care of us and we're trying to take care of them and I, I hope it continues it's look it used to be the problem of the week and then the problem of a few days now yeah. it's the problem of the minute yeah. the internet has speeded things up so fast I can't even believe how fast it's coming yeah you know what I'm talking about it moves quickly yeah it's, it's moving does. very fast yeah but when here's another thing we talk about problems but I think it's not like we have this is debatable. This is probably like going to start a fight. I think we are fine tuning things yeah. and I think we see things as that's a big problem. I don't think people recognize it that way. I don't think they look at it as there is a this major problem. When we look at a guitar that can stand some improvement, we look at it as we got a major problem because we know that thing can be better. So just I like to try to balance out. When Paul that. says problem, I say opportunity. That's that's a good way of putting it, actually. I think. It's easier on the brain that way. Yeah. <laughs> when you say opportunity, I think problem. Yeah. That was funny. Some it truth was funny to that over too. here. I hope we keep doing this fireside chat. It's cool. Yeah, it's fun. And I hope everybody watching got something out of this. By the way, there was a whole team of people here filming this today, and the support that we're getting just from the people in the room is extraordinary. Thank so, you guys. Thank you. Well done. Thank you guys. Bye.